Hi guys, welcome back. So the following skill that we're going to work on is this bleeding control skill. And we'll also talk about shock management. Now this is a national registry skill. It's the bleeding control and shock management skill. So we're going to be leading into that. So to demonstrate, I have our friend Mia with us. So she has a cut on her left front paw. And so we're going to be treating that bleed. So the first step is, of course, the BSI. So I'm gonna grab some of my gloves here and I'm gonna put on my gloves. Now, while I'm doing this, if it was a severe bleed, I'd be talking to my human patient and asking them, hey, can you go ahead, can you put pressure on that bleed yourself? Now, the pressure is what's going to stop the bleed. For Mia, we have to just act quickly. So go ahead and sit, girl, sit. Good girl, wait. So I'm gonna first start with some gauze. I'm gonna take some gauze and I'm gonna put it on the bleed and I'm gonna go ahead and put pressure on. So I'm putting pressure on the bleed. If it continues, no problem, I'm gonna grab another piece of gauze and I'm gonna add that in. I'm never gonna take it away because my goal is to create a clot. And if I have the gauze, the gauze is gonna help the clot form. And so while that clot forms on the first piece, I'm just gonna add on to the top so that I'm not ripping away that clot that we've already formed. So at this point, the clot is forming pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on a pressure bandage. So for that, I'm gonna grab my roller gauze and I'm gonna start in the middle of the gauze and I'm just gonna go around this gauze once. For that second time, I'm gonna go up above the bleed. For the third time, I'm gonna go around below the bleed. For this next one, I'm trying to put pressure on the bleed so I'm gonna go ahead and twist my gauze roll so that I have a point pressure. And that point pressure, I'm gonna put right where that bleed was. I'm gonna go around, I can do that again. I can do that again. I'm just putting pressure on that bleed through there. Once I believe that I've, I've gotten most of the bleed through there, that, that I've stopped the bleed, I'm gonna go ahead and tie off the, the pressure bandage. Here's where we get to use that karate chop method. So, come here, go ahead and sit. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and I'm gonna make sure it's going over the arm. So, let me rearrange here. So we're pulling out, pulling out, pulling out. We're gonna take our two fingers, these are our karate choppy fingers, and we're going to karate chop in the middle, wrap this around. And now, if we consolidate this end, we have two ends of the string. So this two ends we can go ahead and put together. We can tie a single knot, and then follow that up with a bow. And for this bow, is we're putting the knot directly on the bleed. So then if it's on the bleed, it can put the most kind of point pressure there. If it's still bleeding at this point, if we're still bleeding or if it's bleeding really severely, we're gonna have to progress to kind of our, our, our most, um, uh, our, our biggest feature that we can do. And that is this tourniquet. So for the tourniquet, we talked about this in a little bit in lecture. We have this long Velcro strip through here, and then it's gonna end with a turnbuckle, this white piece of tape reading on time, and then my clip here that's gonna really help hold this in place. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna wrap this around the leg, and we're gonna go two inches above, but I can't go on a joint. So the two inches above the wound is gonna be dependent on that joint. So if I was injured just two inches below my elbow, I'm gonna to go to that joint and then a couple inches above the elbow as well. So I'm gonna end up going four inches above the actual wound, but two inches above that joint. For us here, I think I can get, I think I can get it just above the wound without affecting that elbow. So I'm going to wrap this around and take the Velcro and wrap it around and through this turnbuckle as well. That's gonna be important there. At this point now, I'm turning this turnstile and it's not how tight you can turn it. You're not gonna turn it until you can't anymore. You're gonna turn it until that bleeding stops, whatever that means. So we've already put a pressure dressing on and so I only need it to go a little bit further to, to really stop the bleed. So I'm gonna just turn it maybe once more and then I'm gonna lock it inside of this turnbuckle here, inside of these two buckles. This is gonna prevent it from unwinding. At this point, I have this white strip, so I'm gonna put this white strip over the Velcro, and now this is locked in. So everything distal to that tourniquet is now dealing with that compression or compartment syndrome. So it's gonna be making that compartment, the blood's gonna be recirculating and not refreshing with new oxygen. And so we're gonna to start to see those cells die, releasing those toxic cytokines into the bloodstream. So if I mess with this tourniquet at all, 
then all of that toxic blood is going to start moving back into my body and that's when we're going to see really that, that organ failure and the problems through there. So if I need to apply a second tourniquet, I can't, or sorry, if the bleeding isn't going to work, I need to apply a second tourniquet. I can't just kind of release and tighten this first one. So we're now dealing with shock. So Mia's going into shock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat with POW. So the first one is positioning. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have her go down. Hey Mia. Right. Stay, stay. So she's now in this supine position. The next one is oxygen. So I'm going to grab my oxygen cylinder. Fall off here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and set this up. So again, I'm going to crack. Next, we want to take our regulator and pop it on and tighten that finger tightness through there. And then we want to go ahead and open up the tank. All right, we're checking for leaks and we're opening all the way up and then half turn back, listening for leaks. All right, we're right now at just around a thousand, so that's going to be okay. We're going to go ahead and grab our oxygen non rear breather. And this is made specially for dogs. We're going to open up to 10. And I'm going to make sure to hold down on this valve. Oops. Hold down as the bag opens up. And now that the bag is inflated, we're going to go ahead and place this on our patient. So I'm not going to place it on her, but we place over the nose and mouth and we make sure to tighten, uh, pressing in on this nasal clamp and then pulling with the, uh, the strings. The last one is warmth. So I'm going to take this blanket and we're going to throw it over our patient who's already sitting in a supine position. And so then that's going to be that skill. So we're treating for bleeding control with that first, that uh, putting gauze on, direct pressure, BSI first, direct pressure, and then that tourniquet when that's not working. We're tightening just until the bleeding stops. And then after that, we're going to treat our patient for shock. So that's the POW, positioning, oxygen, warmth, and of course, verbalizing rapid transport. Let's take a look at the same skill, but now on a human patient. All right, so Tristan is bleeding from her left arm, and it's a pretty profuse bleed. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on my BSI, but I'm gonna ask, hey, can you hold on to that bleed? Can you hold on with a lot of pressure? I'm gonna spend the time making sure that I have my PPE on, because again, blood is an infectious disease. I'm not sure what's in her blood. So I'm gonna protect myself. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of my gauze and I'm going to place that on. All right, I'm going to put this underneath your hand in three, two, one, kind of release, put back on pressure. All right. It's still not working. It's still bleeding. So I'm going to add another layer. All right, ready? Three, two, one. All right, put the pressure back on and hold it in there. At this point, it's still bleeding. I've done multiple iterations. So I'm going to try that pressure dressing as kind of a, a last step before the tourniquet. All right, I'm going to come in, come in release in three, two, one. All right, I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna go above, I'm gonna go below, and now I'm gonna start with those twists. Right on the wound, right on the wound, right on the wound, just kind of wrapping around. At this point, I pretty much got it, so I'm gonna go ahead and go over the arm, extend out, grab my two finger karate choppy, and we're gonna karate chop halfway through, move this over, and then again I have two ends that I can form into a knot. So I'm going to take these two ends and pull tight directly over that bleed and then come back with that bow through there. All right, what I'm now noticing is that the bleed is still going. There's still blood that's oozing out from this. So my pressure dressing and gauze have not created a successful clot. So now I'm going to move on to that tourniquet. I'm going to slip the tourniquet above I can now go two inches above just underneath the elbow. And I'm gonna move the Velcro in. I'm gonna twist until it's tight, until or until this bleeding has stopped. All right, it looks like the bleeding is now stopped. So I'm gonna lock this tourniquet in. I'm gonna put this time piece over, grab my pen out. And I'm going to write the time that it is right now. So 1843. I'm going to write 1843 on here. And I'm going to put a big T on her forehead. Just so then we can know that she has a tourniquet on. Additionally, she's now probably showing signs and symptoms of hypoperfusion. So that shock. So for positioning, I'm going to go ahead and position you in that supine position through here. For oxygen, 
I'm going to go ahead and attach my non rebreather mask on. Let's go ahead and put it in here. And then for warmth, I'm going to grab that blanket and we're going to toss it over. Now I still know that she has a tourniquet on because I can see on the forehead that giant T or TK that we wrote on the forehead. So at this point, we have now finished the skill, we have now put on that pressure dressing, stopped the bleed, and now we're gonna try to prepare for that rapid transport. So we're gonna move her from this position onto our wheeled stretcher, into our ambulance, and out to the hospital. Now is your time to practice. So included in your at-home kit should be one gauze roll, and then one either 3x3 or 4x4 gauze pad. What I want you to do is practice. Take an injured family member. All right, they're bleeding. Put that first iteration of gauze. Verbalize the second iteration of gauze, never taking off the first. And then now it's time to use that gauze roll. So start it on there, wrap around, around, around. Practice that twisting method to put more point pressure on. And then once you get towards the end, go ahead and roll out. So go over, roll out, and then two finger karate chop pulling underneath. And then you have those two ends. Some common mistakes that I see is for the end that's coming under, that we're trying to use it as a loop. Don't use it as a loop, just use it as a string. Additionally, if we're coming underneath our patient's arm and then we're trying to karate chop, it's not gonna work. So make sure we go under and then over. And then on the side that we're going over, that's where we karate chop. So then we continue going under. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. And otherwise, good luck and enjoy this skill.